On the morning of recording on the 20th of December, following a night of violent air raids on the Gaza Strip, Israel carried out the controlled demolition of nearly 56 buildings in northern Gaza, specifically Shuja'iya. This continues the pattern of controlled demolitions taking place in the Gaza Strip, damaging civilian infrastructure. The same thing happened to the government building in Gaza. The destruction that these demolitions leave behind is immense. Barren lands where homes and life used to be. Some are concerned that these demolitions are not there to serve Israel's said goal to destroy Hamas. Rather, they appear to be geared towards making areas in the Gaza Strip uninhabitable. By forcing the Palestinians to move and by destroying their homes, some are worried that there are plans for resettlement in the Gaza Strip. For example, we see Al Jazeera mentioning a real estate company publishing plans about settling and building on land within the Gaza Strip. And as you can imagine, following the international outrage, there are now announcements saying it was just a joke. It was all a joke by the company. Though some understandably remain skeptical about this, particularly given the action that Israel is taking on the ground. When the IDF forcefully evacuated Nasr Children's Hospital, they left behind premature babies. And these babies were found by a journalist during the ceasefire period. Understandably, much of the world was horrified. But when Matthew Miller, spokesperson for the Department of the State, was asked about this, he seemed unable to condemn it as a war crime, saying instead simply that too many Palestinians had died. That far too many Palestinians have been killed in, in this conflict, and that of course includes far too many Palestinian children and of course Palestinian babies. The same passive language, too many have died, has also been echoed by Rishi Sunak himself. There were indiscriminate bombings taking place. Do you agree? As it, I've been very clear, too many innocent civilians have died. And so we've therefore been very... you agree that the targeting is indiscriminate, therefore... Well, I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not privy to the precise targeting, but what I can say is clear that too many innocent people have died. Evidently, both the UK and the US seem to be prepared to say, in passive terms, that too many civilians have died, but not to hold Israel responsible. We have the case of a Christian woman named Nahida and her daughter, Samar, who was shot whilst sheltering in Gaza's Holy Family Church by an Israeli soldier. And when asked about this incident on LBC, a very, very popular radio station in London, the deputy mayor of Jerusalem had the following to say, there are no churches in Gaza. There are no Christians in Gaza. I don't, I saw the reports this morning. Um, the church, there are no churches in Gaza, so I'm not quite sure where the report. Well. And shortly after this, the Israelis would bomb the Latin monastery in Gaza, something that would have been difficult to do if there were truly no Christians on the strip. And some may not find it surprising that Pope Francis would use the word terrorism to refer to what the Israelis are doing in Gaza. È stata danneggiata la casa delle suore di Madre Teresa, colpito il loro generatore. Qualcuno dice è il terrorismo, è la guerra. Sì, è la guerra, è il terrorismo. Israel are now saying that those Christian women were actually Hamas spotters, whatever that means. It will be left to see how rigorously this accusation is challenged in the English media. And while all of this continues, we are still seeing genocidal rhetoric continuing to come from many quarters within Israel. For instance, here, the Israeli Minister for the Advancement of the Status of Women. Is I don't care about Gaza. I literally don't care. For all I care, they can go out and to swim in the sea. I want to see dead bodies of terrorists. And we have another instance here where an IDF commander is saying explicitly that the Israeli troops did in Beit Hanun what Simeon and Levi did in Nablus. In the biblical story, they are recorded as having killed every man, taken all the women and children as hostages. He says that the same ought to be done in all of Gaza. And such rhetoric is not only restricted to Israel, it has also found its way into the United States of America, Israel's sponsor in its assault on Gaza. For Michelle Bashman, former US representative the people of Gaza are all hired mercenaries and assassins. I mean, which logical person would come out with such ridiculous rhetoric? 
The two million people who live there, they are clever assassins. They need to be removed from that land. That land needs to be turned into a national park. Some are understandably disturbed by this rhetoric, but it seems to reflect the nature of the Israeli-US relationship, which Lloyd Austin, the American Secretary of Defense, says is stronger than ever.